Vin Diesel, Over King of Cringe. Decade, okay, we got to watch this. Vin Diesel has become an international movie superstar. Thanks in large part to his signature role as Big Ball. Oh my God, the greatest take from Chatter, Cookie Dog 69. Austin Abbey, chat is pogoing, but this is literally them whenever a woman shows up on your stream. Straight up, dude. Thank you. Check yourself, chat. This is how you behave half the time. Bald strongman in fast car movies. Oh, hold on. Actually, he's uh, he's the other one. Yeah, there we go. Using his superhuman physique and almost supernatural deep voice, Vin Diesel has carved out quite a niche for himself in Hollywood that doesn't seem to be going away anytime soon. But while Vin has built a reputation as being a bit of a badass on screen, off screen things start to get weird. Because when he doesn't have a script to fall back on and has to form words and god forbid sentences with his tiny little meatball brain, things start to go south pretty quickly in the most fascinating way. When I know for a fact that he cries and like tells people that he's hooked up with um, about his like poetry and shit. Like actually as a matter of fact, I'm telling you, okay? That he, you know, it cries and, and um, uh, Things, songs after he has, has sex with people that he does not know that well. When did this turn into I love you? But to understand who he is now, we must start at the beginning. Vin Diesel was born in- Not toxic masculinity, dumbass. It's weird if you don't know the person that well and you're doing that to a person that you don't know that well. In 1932, inside of a burning building, his father, a camel, worked in the famine industry, which was thriving at the time. You know, maybe I don't need to do a video essay for everything. Brush tool and... Perfect. Hey guy, welcome back to the first and only channel on YouTube where, as you can probably tell, I move. Diesel stuff, okay. Or the last witch hunter, for that matter. Now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure the only Vin Diesel movie I've seen is The Pacifier, the 2005 Disney I've seen this. I've seen that movie. Classic where he plays like a Navy. I watched that movie pirated, like went to one of those like, uh, you know, black market stores in Turkey. And I remember literally paying a whole ass uh, two lira for a pirated copy of The Pacifier. And I watched it. And uh, let me tell you something, it was, I don't remember anything from it, but it probably wasn't worth it. Baby Seal, who is to babysit a bunch of kids as part of a recon mission. Predictably, things get off to a bit of a rocky start, but by the end, he's teaching them a thing or two about self-defense. The kids teach him about the power of family. It's a great movie. I've seen it like 10 times. Anyway, uh, what I'm trying to say is I haven't seen a lot of Vin Diesel movies. Like I said in the beginning, though, this video isn't about his acting, which is perfectly fine. It's about what happens when he doesn't have a script. The most popular example of Vin Diesel cringe was on this interview from a couple of years ago with a Brazil. Trigger warning, wee woo, wee woo. Vin Diesel is about to behave like a chatter around a woman. Okay, uh, so now that we got that out of the way. Okay, so I with triple X movies, dude. Well, the first one only, but I thought it was so sick. Ramstein with the performance in the movie. You know, I was young, young, ha young Hasanabi. Love that shit. Okay, so that's one. I thought it was the coolest to have like a triple X tattoo in the back of your neck. I don't know how the f I did like that but whatever but the reason why i i actually do appreciate vin diesel is riddick riddick is incredible riddick is about a space prison it, it doesn't get any better and in my uh area of interest more than riddick not only that but also the video games of riddick were also so very good Brazilian reporter and i'll only touch on this briefly because a lot of you probably already saw this this was on the h3 podcast but it's still worth talking about so the first few minutes of this interview are pretty normal he's just talking about the film he's in and his a little bit of a history about his career and then he starts to bore himself and he instead turns his attention to the interviewer and just bombards her with compliments but tom hanks was the first one and he, he god you're so beautiful <laughs> God, she's so beautiful, man. <laughs> am I right or wrong? Look at her. How am I supposed to do this interview? Look at Thank this you. woman. Tell me your story. She's so beautiful. <laughs> go on, yo, man. Talk to me, baby. Let's get out of here. Let's go. Like, let's, she's let's pretty. Let's go lunch. Uh, by the way, this is quite literally, this is quite literally the definition of, like, objectifying a woman. You know how people always are like, uh-huh, men get objectified too, blah, blah, blah. Like, what about that? It's like, this literally... This exact thing that you're watching currently, this happens a lot more than you think to women if you are a guy and you've never been around women or you are probably in the process of doing this to a woman. 
And that's precisely why women are like, this sucks. Shut the fuck up. Like, seeing this person and reducing them to an object of sexual desire in the conversation uh, and, and not allowing her to do her job happens a lot more frequently than you would think. My God, I love her. Look how beautiful she is. Thank you. God, wow. So, Tom oh, Hanks? Wow. He just keeps going at it and going at it. And she does her best to get the interview back on track. But then a few minutes later, I guess his, his brain just can't handle this much conversation. So he just goes back to like, you are beautiful. Let's go home and I love Ew. her. I love her. Man, she's so sexy. It's not, I can't do this interview. Am I the only one that's saying it? Look at her. She's Wait, Groot? What year is this from? Why Groot? This is weird. Someone described this to me. Why the f is he something something with, uh, about this timeline doesn't match up? Oh, this is a triple X movie in 2017. Oh, ew. So sexy. It's not. I can't do this interview. Am I the only one that's saying it? Look at her. She's so beautiful. Thank it's you. like you can't even do an interview with her because you're just like da 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 da. da. Yeah, it's kind of hard to watch. Um, but I guess that would be the definition of cringe. So we're off to a good start. When did this turn into beautiful world? So that was a big deal a couple of years ago, uh, rightfully so. It's very weird, but it doesn't even come close to ending there. There's so much more. So let's dive a little bit deeper, but to do so, we need to head over to Facebook. Vin Diesel is the king of Facebook. If you had to guess how many people currently like Vin Diesel's uh, page on Facebook, his fan page. How many do you think? Uh, 12 million. 10 million? 50 million? 12 Not million. even close. A hundred million people like the Vin Diesel fan page on Facebook. Vin Diesel and Facebook are a match made in heaven. And the main reason for that is Facebook live streams. I'm doing a live, guys, so just have a seat and this is gonna be fun. I've never seen someone use so many words to say so little. Watch the first 30 seconds of this one and see how much he actually says. I'm giving you big hugs in a second. I'm giving you big hugs in a second. I'm doing it live. I'm doing it live. I'll give big hugs in a second. I'm doing it live. I'm doing it live. Uh, I am doing it live. I'm doing it live. And um, the reason why I'm doing it live uh, is because Oh, wait, I think I missed it. What is he doing? I'm doing it live. Oh, he's doing it live. Okay. After spending about two minutes saying that he's doing a live and eventually saying he's doing a live because he's thankful to Comcast. Comcast has come in and- Bro, Drew Gooden doesn't understand, bro. It's not easy, okay? Vin Diesel is a live streamer. He's a big streamer. I have to- Sorry, sorry. You know how it is. I have to defend my big streamer friends. That's right. Immediately, I have to start defending Vin Diesel now, okay? Everything he did in that video against that woman, women like that. That's right. Women literally love that shit, dude. Boys, fellas, Vin, doing the right thing. Done wonders. He says that, you know, it's Saturday night and while everyone's having fun, as, as they, they should, should, the cast of Fast and Furious is here brainstorming ideas. We try to imagine what would excite you in the future, what storylines you would like to see continued. And we try to find the, the truth in our mythology and we try to maintain the integrity that is, uh, that is what the Fast and Furious saga has become. It's a movie about driving cars, bro. What? <laughs> it's about family. No, it's about family, Pago. Shut up, dummies that literally got duped by the five head clever marketing scheme that like makes fun of how corny the it's about family shit is. You're literally advancing the marketing for Fast and Furious when you even meme about it. That's right, dude. Guess what? Hollywood will sell you shit, no matter like no matter how aware of uh, your uh, ver, ver, uh, aware of the fact that you are that you are being sold things or not, it does not matter. You are still being sold things. Hollywood is selling you things. Chew on that for a while. Just to give you an idea of the type of people that will come and brainstorm with me. Um... <laughs> yeah, it's about drive. It's about power. It's about drive. It's about power, dude. The Rock's rap song is so good. It like it's. It, I literally constantly so good, dude. It's about drive. It's about power. <laughs> oh man, what made you think that Vin Diesel was a smart guy? I don't know. I just thought he was like artsy fartsy and like loves I don't know doing poetry and shit. He's always blowing up the spot live. 
<laughs> you get the feeling that Michelle Rodriguez here and, and everyone else in the room was like, oh, not again. He's not doing another one of these things, is he? He's going to incorporate us in it, and he's not going to say anything, and we're just going to have to sit there and smile for several minutes. You're watching a, a, a Facebook Live right now. That's right, Ben. That's what we're doing. I guess what, what this, this, vis, this visual shows you is dedication. And, uh, um... Dude, he, he's so weird, dude. He missed gift. <laughs> yeah. Oh, why is he so... I mean, dude, that's why he's got 108 million, dude. He's doing... He's pulling a mischief. Commitment to integrity. Commitment to integrity. So, the, this is a live. Oh, it's a live. I wasn't sure. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but it's hard to- They literally are like, come on, bro. We make so much money, so we have to put up with your bullshit. Like, we have to literally sit here and, like, act like it's totally fine and chill and normal that you're, you know, putting a camera in our faces like this. Oh, man. Even focus on what he's saying, because all I can see is the giant-ass thing in his teeth. But you ready for this? You want to see something, guys? Just pay close attention to where it is. And then watch this next clip. Come on, of course they can. The bummy head thing is not impeccable. Amazing. Stop it. Um, listen. It moved. I've never seen that in my life. This is comedy right here, guys. I don't want to hear anybody else, else's idea of what comedy is because oh. it's this. We found it. Okay, here's another live stream where um, he was at the Avengers Infinity War premiere and he's talking to the camera. He's addressing, you know, the live Facebook audience. And then he goes to like another red carpet interview and like mid sentence, in the middle of his own sentence, completely forgets that he's live streaming and just casually puts his phone in his pocket. Look at that accent. Oh my, okay. Look I at that guys, accent. Can you, I want, All right, let me get on this. Guys, you see this? It's the group coming out of me. I came to the premiere and group just. And it just continues to sit in there. What the f Okay, this is awesome. Wait, why did Drew why did why did Drew Gooden make a YouTube video about how awesome Vin Diesel is, dude? <laughs> He's just literally addressing chat and then puts puts chat in his pocket midway through. There for the next 10 minutes. Uh Hassan does that. I, I, I've done that too, but like I've done that when I had to hide it or got tired of carrying it around. And I tell you that I'm putting you in the pocket. Before he finally pulls it out and realizes what he did. Yeah, no, let him, let him go. Oh my God. <laughs> Yo, you guys have been in my pocket the whole time. <laughs> I mean, he obviously handled it well, but God, that's hilarious. <laughs> this one actually starts off pretty normal, uh, but that only lasts about 90 seconds. Chinese food. You see, Vin is a big fan of milestones. He always celebrates a milestone with a live stream, and he just hit a big one, 50 million. But unfortunately, thanks to some bad timing, he is traveling. Uh, when he hits it, he's on a plane in the middle of his big day. Not to worry, though, he has a plan to make up for it. He goes ahead and plays this very special video that he seems to have filmed and edited himself as a bit of a special treat for the fans. Whoa! I mean, don't get me wrong, his silhouette looks very sexy, but God, did he not listen to that? What the? F edited himself. Okay, I was worried. I thought it was. I thought a it bit was of a TOS. Special treat for the fans. Wait, why is he doing this as his like? Why is this his 50 million celebration? This is so funny, dude. I mean, don't get me wrong, his silhouette looks very sexy, but God, did he not listen to that audio before? Is he f all 50 million? Like, is that what he's doing? Forehand. So that goes on for about five minutes, and then he gets back to himself and says this. He says nothing. He doesn't say anything. That was pretty cool. Here's another live stream of his. <laughs> Wait, what? 
that was apparently right before he was going on Jimmy Kimmel. Nothing too crazy to see here, except 60% of it is upside down. There is one pretty weird interaction here though, when he's talking to these football players backstage. Uh, and he refers to himself as daddy. They're the real, the real thing. Show. We warmed them up for you. They warmed them up for me. They warmed them up for daddy. Thank you guys. And after making sure to establish himself as the biggest alpha male in the room, he goes out and nails that interview. Purple. Purple. Maybe that's what it is. Purple. Purple. I'll admit that it might be a little unfair of me to judge him too harshly based on live streams. A lot of times in live streams, you know, I've done Twitch a few times. You say some weird things. It's natural. I don't have nipples on my ankles. So I don't want to judge him too harshly for that. But what we can do is look through some of his Facebook posts. Now, these are, of course, things that he had the idea to post, thought about it, decided, yes, I will post that and then he posted it. So a lot of extra steps there, a lot of room for potentially being like, oh, maybe I won't do that, but he went ahead and decided anyway. So these are uh, prime Vin Diesel posts. Let's check them out. Here's a fan edit from 2015 where he is being sensually embraced by an elephant. It's not so much the fact that this picture exists, but the fact that he chose to put it on his page. Thank you world for making the- This guy's shitting on Vin Diesel, maybe rightfully so, but he's literally not any funnier, lol. How can you be funnier than the king of comedy, Vin Diesel? I don't understand. He's literally the funniest person on the planet. Yeah, of course, Drew is not as funny as Vin Diesel, who is straight up the funniest person on the planet. I feel a bit sad for him, though. The Rock came out of nowhere and took his Hollywood spot, far superior in every regard. Yeah, that is true. Um, that is true. The Rock did really cuck him out of his, like, big Hollywood dreams. I mean, he's... Poor him. He's just gonna literally, uh... Poor guy, he's gonna have to live with, uh, you know, a couple hundred million instead. He gets Marvel money for saying two lines in a movie? That's true. Imagine making, noticing all these Vin Diesel posts and making a video about them. What? Yeah, he's just a silly little multi-millionaire dude. Uh, damn, even, Hassan Ivy even thinks his jokes are lame, bow down to Vin Diesel like that. Yeah, okay, let's keep going. The new Triple X, The Return of Xander Cage, the number one movie in the world, is the caption to this picture. <laughs> I'm not sure I see the correlation. To accomplish great things, we must dream as well as act. Great quote, great picture. What is What's up with the elephants? Is with him huh. an elephant. Uh -huh. I don't understand. He's got some really good self quotes that he's used as uh, cover photos, like this one. Well, love motivates me in everything I do. Vin Diesel. That's a perfectly good quote, but why even include the well? <laughs> it's like he had to think about it for a second. Well, love motivates me in everything I do. Protect our sacred places. And then it's a picture of him standing in front of Stonehenge. Guys, you've got to protect Stonehenge. Have you seen those rocks? All stacked up on top of each other, all funny-like. We got to protect them. Don't mind me just casually skipping past three consecutive photos that heavily feature elephants. Including this one where I suppose shirtless Vin Diesel is protecting New York from a giant elephant? I don't understand. And then finally we have this one from 2012 captioned Angels. And then it's, um, well, I don't even know what to say about this. What is happening? Like, I don't understand. Who is it? Like, is this, is this like his mom? No, this is not schizo posting chatter. This is grandparent posting. This is the type of shit that your grandmother would post. Then again, it's from 2012 when you think about it. So Vin Diesel seems like a pretty wacky guy. But it doesn't stop at internet videos or funny memes or live streams. There's one more thing I need to show you guys, and I'm really excited about this. I was going to make a whole video about this a few months ago, but then I just put it on the shelf for a while. And then I realized while making this one that this would make for the perfect ending. And no, this isn't entirely about Ben Diesel. I just want to go ahead and preface that now. But he does have a pretty large role in this, and I would be remiss if I went through this whole video without even mentioning it. And the thing I'm talking about, of course, 
is the Fast and Furious ride at Universal Studios. Fast and Furious Supercharged is the newest attraction at Universal Studios Orlando and also, coincidentally, the worst ride I have ever been on in my life. When my soon-to-be wife Amanda, who used to work at Universal, first took me on this ride a few months ago, she prefaced it by saying that the line is better than the ride. I'm pretty sure she meant this as a positive, but after being underwhelmed by the fact that the line is essentially just a very long garage, I started to get a bad feeling about what was in store for me. <laughs> the first red flag that pops up is the sheer plot of the ride. I imagine between all 75 of the Fast and Furious- Dude, this ride is so bad. The funniest thing about this ride is that it is a gigantic self-report when you say this ride is so bad. It implies that you went to Universal Studios in wherever the fuck it is in, in Florida. You saw that there was a Fast and the Furious ride and you thought to yourself, oh, hell yeah, I'm going to watch this. I'm going to be on this ride. I would love to be on this ride, okay? And then you thought, wow, I was underwhelmed by this ride, implying that you had an expectation for the ride that was relatively high and that it did not meet your expectation. Every part of that process makes you look worse. The only acceptable or appropriate way to get on this ride is if you're like, I want to clown on this shit and I want to see what's going on. This is the worst ride on the planet. Oh, uh, my dad really wanted to go on. I didn't have a choice. <laughs> his movies, they could have found one exciting storyline to be the centerpiece of this ride, but instead, here's the plot. You and the rest of the people on board are on a party bus and you're on your way to a party. But right before you get on the ride, you find out that the FBI is here to raid the place. They never say why or what the FBI is trying to find. I guess it's us? They're trying to crack down on us having fun? I don't know, but like, that's the plot of this ride? Why not just, I don't know, do a race? And then we could just drive fast. That would be fun. I'd want to ride that. <laughs> Instead, you spin- Okay, f that. I love this ride. Oh my god, Drew's a hater, dude. This is the greatest ride of all time. What the f Why? It's so... It's so disastrously unimpressive. Uh, I love that. I don't know why. I don't know why they did that. Why did they choose to do that? Toddlers losing their mind. Dude, it was such a weird experience. Being honest, this is accurate? Wait, Spend really? The entire six minutes sitting on a slow-moving bus watching the ride. This isn't ideal for a theme park attraction, but it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if the thing you spent the whole ride watching wasn't a total cringe fest. You're under arrest right now. I've seen bad acting at theme parks before, but good God, I thought these guys were professionals. We don't work for nobody. Oh yeah, there he is. There's my guy. Try to move that vehicle. He seems really happy to be a part of this. Also, what the- <laughs> What? Oh my god! What is going on, dude? Oh! After disaster? This is the greatest. Oh, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. I hate going to, you know, theme parks like this. I hate going to theme parks. I want to go just for this, dude. What the f? These guys are actors, bro. They're like professional actors. Why are they so bad? We don't work for nobody. Oh. Also, what is he getting out of? Like, what just happened? Like, what, what is that? Yeah. Why is he looking in, like, the wrong direction? Yeah, there he is. There. He doesn't know where to look. He literally does not know where he's supposed to look. Wait, wait I'm going to run this back. Professionals. We don't work for nobody. Yeah, there he is. Oh my god. There he is. There's my guy. Oh my god. They are being lifted up by a platform in the garage. This part of the ride is at a party in the garage. <laughs> Dude, why do you know that? Oh, I'm so glad you know that, though. Oh my god. Oh, I love this. I love everything about this. This is my favorite. This is... Oh my god. This is so good. Try to move that vehicle. He seems really happy to be a part of this. Also, what the hell? is this animation. 
Did they 3D animate each character using PlayStation 2 graphics? They couldn't have just green screened this shit and spent more than, I don't know, four days on it? This is embarrassing, and I'm not the only one who feels this way. The top comment on this POV YouTube video I'm borrowing some extra footage from is this. The camera doesn't do it justice. It's much worse in person. This ride does its best to tarnish the great legacy that Universal Studios has always had in my eyes. Its shittiness to me is highlighted by the fact that it's right next to the mummy rock. Why does uh, Drew's wife to be always look upset? Oh, maybe because she worked there? It's shittiness to me is highlighted by the fact that it's right next to the mummy ride, which has been around forever and is the most fun indoor roller coaster. I don't understand. It's literally like the greatest. They went on the greatest theme park adventure of all time. She's upset. This makes no sense to me. Coaster I've ever been on. I've gone on this ride probably a hundred times and it's still fun. I would have enjoyed this interview a lot more if I had got my cup of coffee. You ride the Fast and Furious ride once, and it makes you want to throw away your annual pass. What is that? That's not even a helicopter. And it makes you want to... What kind of helicopter is this? It's a drone copter? Throw away your annual pass. I don't know how much they care, though, because they could have put literally anything here, and it would still do its job of showcasing a few cool cars and the ridiculously overpriced merch, including this entire section of signed paraphernalia by Michelle Rodriguez. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. This video is about Vin Diesel, and as bad as this ride is, it does do a good job of saving the best for last. You see, I was pretty disappointed coming out of the ride until I spotted my hero, my knight in shining armor, Vin. It's crazy he has the time to stand perfectly still all day long considering all of his movies that are coming up, but I'm so glad he does. Best day ever. Yo, that's silly, bro. That's not actually Vin Diesel, dude. I don't think he realizes. Well, that was fun. I gotta do that again sometime. So, what was your favorite part of the video? Yeah, that was pretty funny. But my favorite part of the video was the ad read. No shot, but at the top of the hour, there's a 60 second ad break on this broadcast. And I totally forgot to run it, I think. Or did I run it? Wait, let me see. You might be saved. Nope, at the top of the hour, there's a 60 second ad break and I totally forgot to run it, which is why I'm gonna run it right now, 34 minutes late. It says the last ad I ran was two hours ago. So you will see an ad, of course, unless you subscribe, in which case you will not see an ad. That's right. So middle of the hour ad break. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe. We could do that for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. Here's the ad break now. Just as closing in September 2015, a new structure would rise in its place. Hey, if you like this video, please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. <laughs>